All right, so since we're going to be heading into uh, Sprite Kit territory, I'm going to section off uh, these basic videos into a new uh, session for Sprite Kit. But we basically are just continuing right where we left off with the uh, Swift 2.0 basic uh, video tutorials. But if you did want to go back and uh, keep and watch some of the uh, Swift 1 tutorials uh, that were recorded, uh, that kind of uh, were done after we talked about dictionaries and stuff like that, uh, they're, they're still going to apply. The basics are generally just the basics and they don't change that much but uh, otherwise let's go and uh, play around with some new uh, uh, sprite kit features and a lot of these have to do in particular with uh, Xcode uh, 7 so if you're not using uh, 7 well yeah, either download a beta or just wait about a couple more weeks and you'll be able to grab the uh, the official Xcode 7 version uh, one thing I want to take a look at uh, right away is uh, bringing in some of your assets of course if you're building a game uh, you've probably got a lot of that stuff uh, going already you know what you want to use so you might as well just start tinkering around with it uh, you can at any time dump uh, images into the assets catalog here uh, but I'm going to show you guys uh, a image an animation sequence and let me uh, br so I've got a folder of images these are called uh, idle zero 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 on down to nine and uh, they are just labeled dot uh, png at the end uh, because uh, we're going to be working with uh, all, all retina devices from here on out uh, what i want to do is put in here at 2x dot png and uh, there's a really nifty uh, program to do this it's called a uh, name changer and uh, you know what i do know though that you can do this through the finder as well uh, rename 10 items okay so there's there's a couple ways to do it you can go and replace text find in here replace with uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, name changer though so I'm just gonna drag these on into here and let's get rid of the and the nice thing about this is it gives you a little preview over here what's what it's gonna do before you actually end up reading the, uh, renaming them so I'm gonna get rid of the the underscore and the zero zero so I'm just gonna rename them all and now I've got um, them over on this column uh, let's find dot png and then I'm gonna put in here at 2x dot png and you can see now I've uh, really quickly renamed all of them uh, there's a couple ways you could go about bringing them into uh, Xcode you could uh, rename this file to the folder to dot atlas so it's now it's gonna be a texture atlas and then uh, what Xcode is gonna do let's see if I can there we go is uh, uh, pack them up like a sprite sheet and uh, kind of optimize them uh, that way alternatively though what you could do is um, and you can see them just kind of in here uh, in the folder is you could drop them into the uh, assets catalog as basically just individual images uh, but uh, I would, I'd keep going with uh, texture atlases I'm sure uh, Xcode is uh, optimizing them in some way for playback uh, doing that and then if uh, we wanted to use them well let's go over here to our game scene.sks file let's take a color sprite out of our object or is it media it's object library and if you're not seeing this panel then it's probably because you don't have this toggle on so be sure that is and you can see let me get rid of this you can see we've got our stage here this is set up for the um, for the iPads so we'll just for now we'll just be testing on an iPad drag out that color sprite and we could pick out uh, any one of those uh, textures okay there's kind of large but that's all right it was a big image and uh, but uh, if you wanted this to be an animated image uh, Xcode 7 really makes that incredibly easy now go ahead and leave the idle image in here though but um, toggle open the, the basically this it's like a timeline right here where we can drag in actions so what we'll do and let's just only find actions here I'll, I'll just type in action I'll just isolate uh, this to only the actions that we can use we can now drag in animate with textures right over this way and then you'll notice up here we can uh, then drag in the textures that we want to use to animate with so switch over here to uh, this uh, this is now the media library and they haven't oh, let's see did they do it no they haven't yet um, you, you, you can't shift select these so let me just back up to be sure I get them in order so hopefully that got them in order there so I'm just holding down the option key and alright there they all are I'm gonna drag them in 
And are we able to? Yes, we can reorder them. So if you needed to, you could have uh, reordered them. And uh, then what we're going to do is just set a, a duration for them. Uh, this is a kind of idling sequence. I think one second is probably just fine. And we can loop this on the stage. So there we go. We're going to um, click this little icon. And you can loop it as many times as you want. But uh, since he's just sitting there breathing, let's just make him loop forever. And now when we publish this, we should see this looping character. All right, so let's give him a name. And by the way, I just had to back up a few steps because I accidentally had my scene selected when I went to go give him a name. I should have had him selected. There we go. I'm gonna call him player. And now I can identify him as player. Uh, through the code and I should mention real quick that uh, this artwork comes from our uh, sister site that's uh, gameartpartners.com uh, okay so now that we've got him in here let's play around a little bit with the uh, code there's that name that I just mentioned alright so uh, let's come over here to the top and we're gonna declare a variable that is gonna represent or that we're gonna use to basically cast as our child that's already on the stage. So what I'm going to do is write player and this is going to be an SK sprite node and so I can avoid uh, having to specify this as optional. What I'm going to do is write SK sprite node, just kind of initialize it without anything, without any parameters or anything like that, without a texture. And then when I come down here to my scene, what I'm going to and I should say my did move to view uh, statement, not seen. All right, so when we're in here, what we can do is we can say player equals, and you can either put self or child node with name. Let's just go with self, and uh, then make reference to the player. Now there's a problem with this. When it locates child node with name, it's just assuming it's a, a SK node, not, um, and here, let's look at the actual error. It says, cannot assign a value of type SK node to a value of type SK sprite node. Now, SK sprite node is a subclass of SK node, but you can't just go directly from one to the other, okay? Um, could There could be all sorts of problems with that, right? Uh, so what we're going to have to do is specify that, yes, I know that this is going to be an SK sprite node, okay? And keep in mind, when we set this up in the scene over here, I dragged out color sprite, and this actually is an SK sprite node. If you actually, better better bet is to hover over it over here, and you should see a little pop up. Oh, I thought it was gonna say SK sprite node. Well, uh, this is an SK node. This just little empty guy over here, and you'll notice it says SK node, SK node up there. Uh, but uh, over this way, we've kind of done something that works, but is not that great. All right, and let's just kind of prove that it works. And this warning is just telling me that that texture atlas was too big. It's splitting it up, so you can just ignore that. All right, so we do see our little guy animated. And not so little guy. He's pretty big, actually. And um, this has not failed on us, okay? But watch what happens if we go back to our scene and we take an emitter, all right, which is definitely not an SK sprite node, and we call it player. And we'll just for right now call that player too. Okay, so we're gonna run it again. And we should crash. Okay. Could not cast value of type SK emitter node to SK sprite node. And here is kind of the fun of <clears throat> using a Swift. Let me go back and kind of fix this up. Oh, you know what? For right now, let's leave it let's leave it bad. Here's what we would do to adjust this. We're gonna say if let let's just say some sprite node equals self dot child node with name. We're gonna put this in here. And now instead of forcing this to be an SK sprite node, what we're gonna say is as with a question mark after it. You might remember those from our optional variables as SK sprite node. And then if that succeeds, okay, so basically if we were able to cast this child as an SK sprite node, if it didn't fail, then we've got some sprite node to use. And I should even put in here, sorry, SK sprite node. Uh, we've got an SK sprite node that is some sprite node. And then all we have to do is say player is going to equal some sprite node. And we're not making a duplicate. We're just casting this one as this one. Okay, so let's get rid of this line, which would be very questionable to use. Would work if we absolutely knew what we're doing, but 
you don't always know that the node that you're going to be looking at is going to be a specific type. And uh, there we go. Uh, let's see. It's actually, <laughs> it shouldn't have worked because, remember, we didn't adjust them yet. We still have player two and player out there. So let's put a little print statement in here that says, um, uh, could not cast some spray. I'll just leave it at that. Ooh, did you, did you guys hear the thunder out there right when I published? <laughs> All right, so we do see the the, the correct uh, message down here, and that just basically keeps us from doing the wrong thing. And now let's go and fix this. So let's go find our little emitter. And by the way, we, we could have easily started emitting particles out of this little guy if we wanted. Um, we would have to set the, the texture for it. Where is the texture? There it is, texture node. <clears throat> and we could really quickly put particles into the scene. This is an amazing, amazing setup here now in Xcode. Well, Xcode 6 had that option too. But uh, Xcode 7 has truly refined it. So uh, this time around, uh, let's be sure that our code is working. The cast succeeded. And uh, now let's, let's do something in our touches began statement to kind of prove this. So we're going to say player.alpha equals player dot alpha times 0 0.9 and if you ever leave out that uh, zero in front of a decimal up oh, there it is it's gonna complain don't get afraid of that one it's not a big deal and now every time we touch down the screen we should be able to adjust the alpha and you can see I'm just tapping down here and so long sucker you're out of here dude so um, which would actually look kind of cool in a black background. Uh, <laughs> that is an option we could set in our scene over here. So it would certainly look a lot neater with a with our shadow boy, right? Where's black? There it is. Cool. And I think if you guys can kind of let that soak in, that's a good. Hey, how come it didn't adjust it? Well, maybe I, maybe I need to run it one more time. Save it out. There it is. You do have to save your, your files occasionally. Oh, look at him. He's going away. So anyway, uh, that's a, I know we didn't really write much code here, but we spent a lot of time bringing in our assets and things like that. So uh, if you can just remember to do this right here whenever you feel like it's necessary or if you find yourself resorting to doing that as and then forcing something to be something else, that's just a little caution for you there that maybe you should do a little in-between step here where you create kind of temporary SK sprite node and then make that you know equal to that and um, it's just a little safety net for you. All right, a new video coming up next where I promise we'll do something more exciting.